Okay, so let's move on. And, uh, uh, and so uh, thanks, uh, first of all. Well, I'm, uh, since I, I, I'm somehow one of the co-organizers of this event, uh, I want just to thank again the School of uh, uh, Public Administration here in Catalonia to give us this opportunity to give this event from here. And uh, by the way, let's move on now in the next section. And uh, here we have uh, three, I would say, speakers that are really interesting from all of us from different perspectives since they represent uh, from one side the Ministry of Economy and Finance. Here we have uh, Juan Manuel Garrido, that he's the Deputy Director of Development and Business and Innovation. Then we have uh, one representative that is also very important, that is from Sedeti, that is Miguel Ortiz Pajares, that he is the Coordinator of Innovative Procurement. And uh, also he's, uh, since six months, I see that he's also the Spanish National Contact Point for Nanotechnology, Advanced Material, and Advanced Manufacturing and Processing in Horizon 2020. And then we have also uh, one representative from Axio, uh, so more local, Government of Catalonia, that is the Agency for Business, uh, Competi uh, business Competitiveness here in, uh, in Catalonia, and he's in charge for the Research and Development Business Department. So now that I have introduced <laughs> who you are, I give the words to, uh, to Juan Manuel Garrido. Thank you very much, uh, Rosana, and good morning to everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer, and in particular, the Departamento de Salud, La Escuela de Administración Pública Catalana, and ACUAS, for the invitation to take part in this uh, inspired workshop on public human of innovation. I have been asked to briefly introduce you with um, the general adoption status of public procurement instruments in Spain, and in particular, funding opportunities deriving from it. And to that end, and since we have just briefly 10 minutes, and I have been strongly commanded to stick to the time, I just would like to share with you three, three basic ideas. Um, first, I would like to present you the objectives and the aims that we are considering when we are using public procurement of uh, innovation instruments. Secondly, I would like to uh, talk about the economic rationale for using these tools, and thirdly, I just uh, want to very quickly present you the adoption status of these instruments within, the, within Spain at the national level from the point of view of the general administration. Then, if we mo move to the first idea, which are our reasons, our targets for using these tools, indeed we have three, and all of them are functioning jointly and in a synchronized way. First, when we are considering the use of these instruments, we want to improve uh, public services, uh, and this can be understood from the point of view of, a, of effectiveness or, and, or efficiency. And uh, at the same time, we want to leverage funding for business innovation. And finally, we want to make sure, we want to support the commercialization of this business innovation. And as I said, these all three objectives work all together. And we consider either way the use of PPI, Public Procurement of, Inst of Innovation, or PCP, per commercial procurement, any uh, mean of public procurement that uh, actually uh, helps us uh, to comply with these three objectives is uh, welcome, and it's indeed in the portfolio of instruments that we, are, we have already deployed, and right now we are fine-tuning, as we will see at the, at the end of my presentation. But maybe more relevant is why are we considering the use of this instrument from the point of view of a Ministry of Economy? And this here, I would like to talk about two points of view, one from a macroeconomic perspective and, uh, and the second one from an econo econometrical uh, point of view. I think we are all well acquainted uh, with uh, the contribution that public procurement uh, share for uh, a national GDP in uh, in an average uh, member state, either from the European Union or from the OECD. Uh, we are talking about the 10 to a 20 percent share out of the national GDP, which means that a significant moderate contribution from public procurement budget set aside uh, would imply, would lead to a significant increase in uh, research and development public supported budget uh, taken from this uh, public procurement. For instance, if we consider uh, a budget set aside of uh, 
0.5%, uh, which is five basic points from, uh, from an average member state deriving from public procurement budget, we could increase up to a 9% the uh, amount of the research and development public budget. But there is also a very important point when we consider the first or the more basic um, econometrical model that we are considering. We have a number of them produced internally and all uh, that has been uh, developed in, uh, con in jointly with the OECD, I mean uh, models, to uh, try to identify which are the effects of using these tools within the scope of a, of a national economy. And we have identified in this first approach that um, using this kind of tools increase significantly the likelihood of uh, and the likelihood and the strength of research and development private investment uh, by an amount of as much as a two twice uh, the, the the initial uh, plan investment which means that if we as i said before dedicate uh, five basic points 0.5% of the public procurement budget on a basis on a set aside uh, we will increase, as I said already, 9% the research and development uh, public budget, and this could imply up to a 77% increase uh, or attraction of R&D private investment. So we are facing an important uh, economical instrument to uh, attract private investment on research and development based on a moderate increase in uh, research and development public budget. But this doesn't come for free. And we are facing also with instruments that are very attractive, but are, it requires, and I, have, I think that the, the previous speakers who also introduced this, that it requires highly skilled staff, and uh, at least in our experience, it implies a long standing and, in a certain degree, complex operation. And despite of these apparently difficulties, the gains are very attractive, so we have actually used these tools. And these, in the last uh, three uh, slides, and I, have, I think I still have uh, a, couple of, a couple of minutes, I would like to present to you what we have been doing so far and what we are planning for the next uh, years to come. I will not enter into the details of the instruments because I believe, uh, or I think so, that Miguel from CDTI will go into the details of the particular instruments. But I, I can briefly tell you that we, can, we have started to work in a programmatic approach with these instruments within the general administration uh, by 2010. We have dedicated, we could say, uh, this is just to generalize, the first five years to uh, do the groundbreaking on the basis of the legal and financial framework we have uh, run some major modification in a number of laws, like uh, LES, which stands for uh, Law on Sustainable uh, Economy. Uh, we pass new laws like the Law on Science, Technology, and Innovation, which is the LCTI. We also transfer the Law on Public Contract, which stands here for TRLCSP, uh, just to uh, guide you. And... Uh, but you, you may, may already be aware that we will also transform again uh, the law on um, public procurement uh, according to the new uh, European Union directive. And um, besides of that, we have designed a number of instruments. I'm listing them here in bold uh, type. Uh, we, we develop a guide, also a, a number of leaflets and a, and a book. Uh, uh, we have deployed a help desk to support public procurement and potential suppliers. We have developed a number and developed and deployed uh, a number of financial instruments, in particular in no compra and in no demanda, and we also have developed a number of KPIs, key performance indicators, and some uh, minor regulations uh, to allow us to include these in the, in the national uh, yearly budget planning uh, to identify uh, this kind of, uh, of calls. Um, and we have already uh, piloted all of these instruments, we'll see in the next slide, and right now, 
coinciding with the new operating program for the European Research and Development Funds, we have planned, uh, well, we have, we have fine-tuned this instrument, indeed we are fine-tuning then, and we have planned uh, a larger amount of uh, this uh, ERDF for the next period that you may know that uh, starts from 2014, actually entering into operation, thank you, in 2015, this very year, and would last until 2020, theoretically, and the extension is already planned until 2022. But concerning the first batch of instruments, which also uh, rely partially at least on the European Regional Development Funds from the Period, uh, from the period that this ended, is ending this very year, the period 2007-2013, we have uh, already mobilized on 260 million euro in PPI, PCP operations. And we have run a number of 22 operations from 2012 to 2015. And you may see here in the maps how the use of these instruments is uh, widespread in across the country. And what is maybe more relevant in terms of uh, funding opportunities, we have already planned an additional amount of envelope, budget envelope of 300, roughly, million euro of new European regional development funds, which would imply uh, an estimate of 400 million euro in mobilization. You may know that the European regional funds require co-finance, so these 400 million in uh, at both the European Regional Funds plus uh, the Ecofinance and an average of, of a 70%. You know that this may range in Spain from 50 to 80%, depending on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the region we are talking about. Um, we have already uh, started to work on a larger scale operations, uh, like here at, at the bottom of the slide, you may see that we are running now uh, programs or are building up programs on the health area, security area, and uh, some other services. And right now we have identified some more than 200 needs uh, for start, uh, that are meant to start uh, to, to transform into operation by the end of, the, of this year. So we are quite confident that by the year 2020, um, I, could, I could say that maybe a couple of years uh, before 2020, the, the spread of, on the use of this kind of instrument in Spain will cover all the territory. Um, and this uh, envelope uh, that I have talking and coming to an end will add to the, to, to the amount that are planned at the regional level as well as to those uh, that are uh, planned for Horizon 2020. And to go into the detail of the instruments, and uh, of course, thank you very much for your attention, I just leave the floor to Miguel from CDTI. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I already start. Uh, thank you, Rosana, for the introduction. And my presentation is about the, the carrots we have to encourage uh, public procurers to, to this innovation procurement. Because innovation procurement, uh, we have uh, heard about the, the benefits it has and, and things like that, but sometimes uh, procurers need some financial or uh, encouragement to, to really uh, develop this kind of, of procurement. So. What are these carrots? Uh, we have at national and, and European level uh, three instruments. Let's say national level, Inno Demanda and Inno Compra, and uh, European level, we have the, the Horizon 2020 program and the structural funds, which are European but are used in the national instrument, which is called Inno Compra. Uh, I, we, I will start uh, with Inno Compra, as uh, Juan Manuel already talked about uh, this instrument. Uh, this is basically a co-financing, a co-funding that the Ministry of Economy and Competitiveness uh, uh, provides the, the procurers in order to carry on with uh, in innovation procurement. This co-funding could uh, uh, will depend on the on the region it uh, the procurement is developed, and will be uh, in a percentage of the uh, of the tendering. So. Let's, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, between 50% and 85% uh, of the total budget of the procurement. Uh, this is a, um, an instrument that uh, 
benefits directly to the procurer. But then we have another instrument which is managed by CDTI, the entity that I belong to, and it's called InnoDemanda. What's uh, InnoDemanda about? InnoDemanda is basically the financing of the R&D, the research and development, that the suppliers need or are required to do in an uh, innovation procurement process. Uh, so the, the, um, the financing is to the suppliers, and, and we could ask uh, and how this is uh, benefiting the, the procurers. So, okay, we do this in, in the way that we synchronize the evaluation and uh, awarding of an of a R&D project to the suppliers with the tendering uh, process times. In order to the suppliers get a resolution of the funding or not funding by CDTI before the uh, bids presentation uh, in order to give or to be able to provide a more competitive uh, offer okay, to, the, to the procurers. To do this, we uh, do uh, as short as possible our, our evaluation process in CDTI. Uh, so we use what, what we, the so-called uh, fast track uh, so six weeks maximum to evaluate the, the R&D projects. And we use to finance the typical instruments that uh, uh, will be open uh, at that moment in CDTI. The typical CDTI instrument uh, uh, for R&D projects is a, a partially reimbursable, reimbursable loan, which uh, we have a, 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 a this non-reimbursable part will depend on the type of company, the type of projects, all the details you can, you can have a look at that uh, in the, in the web page at CDTI. Uh, you have here a, a, a diagram, uh, it's, it's a summary where you can see the, all the process of InnoDemanda. First of all, the procurer joined InnoDemanda through what we uh, call uh, protocol adhesion or terms of reference of this uh, join. Uh, once this is uh, done, there's the tender and announcement, announcement where the candidates at all the suppliers could present to CDTI the, the R&D that the uh, tendering is uh, requiring. The f then the, we evaluate it in, in the fast track process and before the bids presentation, and as I already explained. It's important to say, to, re to underline that the R&D projects that are required uh, uh, by the procurement should be of at least 175,000 euros. It's uh, because that's the minimum eligible amount, uh, uh, the minimum eligible budget that uh, CDTI will approve as an R&D project. We have a lot of in-demand cases in many sectors, in let's say all the sectors. We, it's, it's not depending on the uh, awarding procedure, it's the same for us. And, of course, it has benefits to supplier and procurer. I will not uh, explain a lot about this because the time restrictions. As you can see, the support is up to now more than 40 million euros uh, to these R&D projects of the suppliers. Then uh, I will introduce the Horizon 2020 uh, funding instrument for innovation procurement. It will depend on the type of innovation procurement as uh, Susan introduced us, the two types of uh, uh, innovation procurement that the Commission, the European Commission, defines in Horizon 2020. And depending on this, it will um, vary the type of uh, funding rate and so on. So for PCP and PPI, basically, and in summary, PP, PCP is uh, the procurement of R&D services, only R&D, and PPI will be the procurement of a product that doesn't need any R&D. So uh, how we could say it's a, an innovative product? It's innovative because, and the European Commission says that, states that, because it's not commercialized in a large scale, scale basis. So... There are three types of instruments that European Commission provides to uh, procurers. And it uh, will be, uh, so uh, every instrument depends on the state we are in the procurement process. The CCAs the, is the acronym for coordination and support actions. This will be the preparation of an innovative uh, procurement. 
uh, it could be uh, finally a PCP or PPI, but uh, this is, it's uh, nothing more than a preparation. So it, uh, a group of procurers will be funded uh, for the coordination activities and preparation of this PCP or PPI. For example, typical activities that, if, uh, that are funded are uh, identifying common challenges, conducting open market consultation, best practices exchange, and so on. And this will have a 100% funding rate. Then the PCP includes the funding of the procurement. It's a PCP type procurement, and it will have a 70% funding rate. Also, uh, is uh, financed the, um, the coordination and the work networking activities that are uh, around this uh, uh, procurement. And then we have the PPI, which is a 20% 20, uh, 20, uh, funding rate, and the same. The eligible cost are the procurement, budget, and the uh, coordination and networking, networking activities around them. As you can see, as far as we are closer to the market, the funding rate is lower. And finally, last, um, last slide is about the possible synergies that we can have around these instruments. Of course, we are allowed to use more than one instrument in one innovation procurement of the instruments that I already have told you. Uh, and, uh, but we must be very careful about its complementarity because, okay, we can, this, you can see in this slide the, the type uh, the cases we, we could uh, use these instruments and in a joint or, si or simultaneous use of all the funds in a sequential uh, way, additional funding or alternative funding. But we have two things that we should be very careful about that. It's that we cannot find, we cannot uh, fund the same concepts or items with these instruments. And uh, the other um, uh, important thing is that you cannot fund your own contribution with uh, the, uh, the structural funds or the, uh, the Horizon 2020 funds. This means that, for example, if my procurement is uh, funded with a PCP instrument, let's say 70% uh, 70, uh, 70 funding rate, the uh, reminder, 30%, we cannot uh, be uh, financed or funded with another instrument. That's our own contribution, and uh, it's not allowed to fund, to fund that uh, part with another, another instrument. And that's it. It's a very brief uh, introduction to the instruments. More um, details if, you, if there's time for questions, and if not, here's my phone and my email. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I I would like I would like to thank the organizers to invite us to participate in this conference. Uh, I'm going to talk about Axio, who is Axio and, and what do we do, about uh, smart specialization strategy, and finally about uh, Axio services related to innovative public procurement. Well, Axio is an agency which helps Catalan companies to increase their competitivity. It belongs to the government of Catalonia and it's part of the Department of Industry and, and Employment. Uh, we have two lines of activity. One is innovation and another one the internationalization that we consider that is key drivers to increase the competitivity of the companies. Uh, the, the services that Taxio offers uh, are specialized uh, 
especially at advisory of of guidance and we pretend to give answers to the needs that company have in, in terms of R&D process. Our services are oriented in different several areas in function of the capacities and expertise and, and history of, of the companies. We, we, this, we focus on, on companies that want to innovate, companies who innovates that not, not regularity with, without continuity, companies that innovation is an integrated process, and companies that innovation is an integrated process and its scope is international. We have several strategic agreements with several agents that facilitate, that makes easy to give services to the, to the companies to in the line that, that, we are, that we want, that is increase the competitiveness. About the smart specialization strategy, uh, Catalonia has a risk cut strategy, is an, an answer to the, to the exercise, exercise that the European Commission asked for all the regions to define uh, in which areas each region is has uh, good capacities, skills, and, and, and decide to orient these R&D programs. In Catalonia, we, we have done this activity, this exercise, and we define an, an strategy called Ruiz Trescat, who define uh, four pillars. In these four pillars, there is a, we, we have a leading sectors, Emerging activities, uh, uh, key enabling technologies, and innovation environment. In the leading, in the leading, in the leading sectors, we define or we we could find the food sector, energy and resources, industrial systems, uh, industries based in design, industries related to sustainable mobility health industries and cultural and experience based industries. And another pillar, key pillar is the uh, pillar related to uh, enabling technologies where we can find six technologies that we consider uh, key, key enabling. With these pillars, uh, there is several tools and one of these tools is the innovative public procurement. Here we, you can see the, the description of the sectors, the cross-cutting enabling technologies. And let's talk about now uh, about PPA Quick White. First of all, I will show you our internet site where you can find all the details about PPA support program. Uh, you, you will be able to find all the information about what Taxio do in this, in this subject with more detail than, than in this presentation. There is a, a, a general process to PPI process with several steps that we adapt in our, in our instruments. This is the, the general process focused in... in in Axio, eh? Axio have two, two, two orientation for, for helps in, in PPI. We help to the companies and we help to the public agencies who could uh, define tenders for, for, for PPI processes. For the companies, we consider a PPI process as a R&D project. There's an, uh, an opportunity for the companies to manage and, uh, and develop an, an R&D project. And our instruments for the R&D projects are adapted to this particular case. We have to detect opportunities, we have to do market consultation, and we have to search technology partners, uh, technical estructuration of the project, and other, other key, key factors that, that uh, could, could uh, 
uh, have to do a good R&D project. For the public authorities, uh, it's an activity in design. We are start working on and defining something, something organizational aspects. But the main, the main activity in this, in this area is to certify the innovative component of the tender. Uh, Axio could, could do this activity, except for the health sector, that is an activity on a function who uh, acquires is the, the, the agent or the, the key agent in this, in this part. Uh, in, our, in our website, it's possible to find open tenders, upcoming tenders, and, and closed tenders. We consider that this is uh, tools for the companies or for, the, for the, anyone who is interested in, in PPI could find uh, interesting information. Well, this is our, our contact details for more questions or, or, or anyone that, 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 you, that you want. This is all. Thank you very much for your attention.